Rodney, this is a guest we've been waiting on for a long time now, and you're a former defensive coordinator and Coach Pease. I got to, out of respect, I'm going to let you have the first question here, Rod. Well, first, let me just say this, man. Dean Pease was such a, I mean, all the players loved Dean because he was so easy to talk to. He was so humble and just so smart, but he wasn't so smart where he, he didn't think that he can get input from the players. So, Coach, I just had to say that. I appreciate you. How's retirement going? That's my first question. Hey, you know, hey, it's a uh, it's tough time right now with all the COVID stuff, but everybody's going through it, and we'll get through it. And uh, getting a lot of golf in, I'll say that. We we look at the the Titans' pass rush and Jadavian Clowney. They just they just don't have any pass rush. What I mean, what would you do this year to try? To, would you add an extra linebacker? Would you come up with more creative blitzes? But how can the Titans this year get more pressure on a quarterback coach? Well, I think they were trying a little bit more last week in a way that, you know, um, it's, it's probably going to have to get manufactured. It's, it's hard to do it with just four guys because I don't know that we got the four guys. But I do say Jeffrey Simmons and Daquan Jones, those guys can push the middle pretty good. Um, Harold Landry's a pretty good edge guy. We just They could use another edge guy if you want to get a four-man rush. So to me, the biggest way is, is to – do simulated pressures. You know, that's what we did a lot last year. We felt good about uh, the thing about the simulated pressures is you can, if you, once you learn the protections and you can break them down and know you can attack them, then you can really attack them with four guys, just bring in different guys and drop in different guys and still get maximum coverage. And I think you got to be careful a little bit playing man coverage all the time because it, you know, they're going to catch, they catch onto that and they're doing a lot of stuff to beat the man coverage. So I, you got to manufacture it, Rodney. I mean, I think with, with who we have, it's kind of like we did last year. Coach right. Lamar Jackson, you know, so many of these young next generation of quarterbacks around the NFL, yeah, they can run. Yeah, they can do incredible things with their legs. They can throw too. When you think about trying to stop this group of guys, I know you had some chances to try to do so. What's the most challenging part about these quarterbacks that can really do both at such a high level? You know what? One of the things is, and we, we made this motto last year, and secondary coach called me this week and told me they, they use the same thing this year, is that when you're playing a Lamar Jackson, for example, you want to capture him, not try and kill him. If you come up there and try to really shoot your gun and go after him, that guy is so quick, he's going to dodge you. Sometimes you've got to give up a yard or two to maybe not give up 20. You know, like even when you spy him, last, last year, the only big run we gave to him was we, we were spying him, but the guy that was spying him kind of shot his guns. As soon as Lamar took a shot, or stepped to one side, he shot in there, and then all of a sudden Lamar comes out the other side. You just got to wait. And then, then you, hey, yeah, you're going to give up a four-yard run, but those are not going to kill you. And I thought they did a good job this last weekend just like we did kind of in the playoffs. We gave up that one, but we kept running him to the sideline and using the sideline as the 12th defender and really just just don't give up the big one. So sometimes, you know, I used to say that one, like when we used to play against Welker and little receivers uh, going against him when, you know, when I went against him at, at Baltimore when he was still with the Patriots. Don't try and kill the guy because he's you're going gonna to make you miss. Just tackle him. And sometimes that's the way with some of these quarterbacks, too, is quit trying to get the big hit. Just get the guy on the ground. Big Ben's the same way. I mean, he's a different kind of guy because he's so big. Just tackle him. Don't try and kill him. You're not going to kill him. Well, Coach, I've had the great pleasure for these few weeks of being a teammate of Rodney Harrison. It's one of my favorite things to do because he'll always tell you exactly what he thinks. That's my favorite part about it. How about any <laughs> great stories of coaching the great Rodney Harrison? I tell you what, here's the thing about Rodney is that it, what he said was true. And I learned it early on from him and a bunch of those guys with the Patriots, Brewski, all those guys. Look, they're out there playing the game. They know more than the coaches know. They do. They see it all the time. You need to get their input. They're coaches on the field. They are. I mean, it's different than college or high school where you got to really tell everybody kind of what to do. If you don't listen to them, you're really making a big mistake. And, you know, I used to have what I called a signal callers meeting, and I'd have four or five guys in there tell them, here's the game plan, and I want to see their reaction. And I did it at Baltimore with Ray Lewis and Suggs and Haloti Nada and those guys and said, hey, here's the game plan. What do you think? Ed Reed, 
What do you guys think? If you don't like it, I sure as heck don't want to be calling it. I mean, I want what you guys want too. We're all in this thing together. This is a collaborated effort. Yeah, I'm the coach, but you're the guys that got to play. Here's the thing I loved about Rodney. We had a situation in New England where I had Brandon Merriweather as a safety, James Sanders as a safety, and I had Rodney. I could put Rodney in at linebacker and play money linebacker. I could move him out the next play to nickel and play big nickel, and I could move him back to safety on certain calls. That's unbelievable flexibility. That was the year that, you know, in 2007, we went undefeated. You could move those guys around, and Rodney gave us that ability. The other two guys were really safeties. But Rodney gave me the ability. I remember one time we did a simulated pressure at Dallas, and it was only a four-man rush, and he ended up beating uh, Witten in the back. So they even went max protection, and Rodney beat the guy and sacked Romo just on a simulated rush. But he was came from the nickel. And then the next minute I may have him at money, and the next minute he may be at safety. He gave us incredible flexibility on that defense. And I've kind of used that ever even at Baltimore. I used it with, with other guys. I learned it from Rodney. Coach Pease, this has been such a great visit. We, we really appreciate you taking some time. I, I don't know how bored you've gotten with the whole quarantine thing. You think <laughs> this TV stuff, too. Really appreciate you taking a minute here. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.